This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. My guest today says prophecy often is avoided by believers. Todd Hampson is with the Prophecy Pro podcast, and he explains why prophecy often gets a bad rap. Now, you had mentioned that there's this explosion of the next generation is who you guys targeted, and there's this explosion of new believers, but uh, do they see the difference? I mean, you see a little bit of it. I see a lot of it because I'm a lot older. But the difference between uh, the world and our, our idea of, of what was going on in the world, current events back in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, where these younger believers are seeing it since the turn of the century. And do yeah. they really believe there's been that much of a change that this really is a foreshadowing? It, it's something we have to kind of point out to them because you're right. They've grown up. <clears throat> excuse me. They've grown up with it. Um, my oldest is uh, 21, so he was born, you know, just before 9-11. So his whole life has been in this era, this mm -hmm. post 9-11 life and, and my other kids as well. So they've kind of grown up with it and they just live with it. But when I when we sit down and explain, for example, if you just this is a, a little bit longer view, but if you say, hey, let's go back to the early 1900s, mm -hmm. um, Russia was technically a Christian nation, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, the Jewish people, there was you know, no, no real worldwide known indication that Israel was going to become a nation again. You know, World War One and Two hadn't happened yet. So really, the past century, so much has happened. And honestly, even the past 20 years with, you know, the oh, civil war in Syria and all these other stage setting things. There's another prophecy found in Ezekiel 38 and 39 about a future war uh, where Russia and other nations come against Israel from the north. The stage is fully set for that as well. So there's a lot of complexity, but if, sure. if what we're trying to do is show people, if you look at the events of the world through the grid of Bible prophecy, suddenly it's like putting on 3D glasses and everything makes sense. Yeah, if you look at it through, through the Bible, I, I remember my wife's grandfather, uh, he was in his 90s when he passed away, but he says, okay, he says, I know Jesus is coming now. I know it, it's going to be soon because I've, I started out riding a horse and I saw the car and I saw the, 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 the bombs and I saw the wars. Now I've seen a man land on the moon. Yeah. God's got to be doing something, he said. Yes. And that was back in the 60s. So yeah. uh, a lot has, do you feel like there has been an acceleration? I really do. And, and tying back that question with a previous question that I think I forgot to answer was there, we're seeing this convergence of things and it is different than any, any other era. You know, mm -hmm. the, the prophecy never happens in a vacuum. It, take the first coming, for example. It says Jesus came in the fullness of time. And part of that was uh, the Roman Empire being in place, Roman roads being in place, tr uh, Roman travel so that the gospel could be spread, that kind of thing. So the same thing is going to occur with the second coming of Christ and that it, it's not just going to suddenly one day everything's in place. We'll see these trends begin to happen. And some of those trends that we're seeing is exactly what you just mentioned, technology. Sure. Uh, if you study prophecy, the technology that is needed for Revelation 13, for example, the mark of the beast, mark. you need a digital currency. You need a way to track every single person on earth and be able to just turn them on or off from the system, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, the two witnesses are killed in Jerusalem, and it says the entire world will see it. That even 20 years ago, that was an impossibility. But now one person standing there with an iPhone live streaming the event and the whole world can see it. So sure. all the things that used to be, how in the world is this going to take place with the technology that's here now? We can see it eventually forming into everything that is prophesied in Scripture. Yeah, I remember a, a, a pastor friend of mine talking back in the 70s about there's going to be a cashless society and there's going to be one currency. And I thought... Really? How's all that going to happen? But yeah. it's, it's, it's happening now. If, if mm -hmm. you're talking to a, a lot of non-believers and, uh, and they want to get started, they say, okay, the, the Bible validates the truth of Jesus Christ. It, it, mm -hmm. The prophecy validates Christ is who we say he was and who he's and, and coming again. Where do they start? I mean, I, I talk, heard a guy say the other day that uh, uh, there was a, a Korean gentleman who was handed a Bible one time and... Uh, uh, we usually tell people, okay, we're going to give, give you this Bible, go to the book of John and start mm -hmm. there. You know, yeah. well, this guy didn't know any difference, so he started at the beginning. He started with Genesis <laughs> and read through the book because that's how they did it in Korea. Yeah. Where do you tell a non-believer to, okay, prophecy can be 
a little bit confusing. Prophecy mm -hmm. can lead you down some rabbit holes if you're not careful. Where do you tell them to start and how do you tell them to proceed? I mean, it, yeah, that, that's a fantastic question. And that's one we get a lot. And, and we validate that comment because, for example, John 316, that's simple enough for a child to understand mm -hmm. salvation. But it's almost like God intentionally built prophecy into the Bible so it forces you to do Bible study. Mm -hmm. And Jeff and I often say it's called Bible study for a reason because it, <laughs> you <gotta laughs> it takes work a little at it. bit of study, takes a little bit of you know putting the puzzle pieces together. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it drives people to do more of an inductive study where they're letting Scripture speak and they're observing mm -hmm. things themselves and putting the puzzle pieces together. Then Scripture becomes part of you and your convictions become so much deeper versus just having a pastor tell mm -hmm. you what to believe. Um, so we often point people to, uh, matter of fact, I have a book called Nonprofit's Guide to the End Times, where I lay out, start with the book of Daniel, because that gives kind of the basic framework for everything in Revelation, and then read Jesus's Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, and then read the book of Revelation. And there are definitely some keys. I also talk about the interpretation methods that I mentioned earlier, but if you just do your own study, let scripture speak to yourself, I think you'll start to put the puzzle pieces together. But the Old Testament prophets, Jesus' talk on the end times, yeah. and then the book of Revelation. Well, I know you, you, you guys haven't put together a, uh, a timeline that somebody can put on their wall and look at, but you, you have done a, uh, an interesting thing with uh, the Prophecy Pro's Illustrated Guide to Tough Questions about the End Times. Tell us mm -hmm. about that a little bit, because it, there may be people watching us now and say, I, I, I need to get a hold of something that will, really will get me started. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how does how's this thing been going for you? It's been going great. And that, that's a resource we put together for that exact reason, for people mm -hmm. who are new to Bible prophecy, believers or non-believers. And basically it's the top 100 questions about the end times. And they're categorized in 10 different sections. And it's also laid out uh, chronologically. So in other words, people can either read it cover to cover or they can use it as a resource to bounce around to different things. For example, there's one section on the rapture, you know, ten, top 10 questions about the rapture. There's one section on the millennial kingdom. So they can bounce around to different topical sections or they can read it cover to cover. And it really does, it goes through every key thing from interpretation methods to the order of events to the different views. I mean, it, everything is jam packed in that book. So it's a great resource. So we'll get them started and, 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 and carry them on through that. Uh, yeah. Some of these telling signs that we were talking about, uh, we were watching uh, last, I don't know it was last week or the week before, there was going to be a signing of a treaty with the World Health Organization, which was going to give them powers over several nations to come mm -hmm. in and decide how they were going to face the next pandemic, what the rules were going to be, and could tell any country, you got to lock everybody down. You see more draconian things like that that, that, that are on the horizon? Definitely do, you know, and that's one thing, one of those um, shadows that's casting it mm -hmm. ahead of the tribulation is the push towards globalism, you know, and if you read wh whether it's the World Health Organization or, you know, there was just a big global event last week in Davos, Switzerland. Davos, yeah. Yeah, it's where what used to be considered conspiracy theory is now clearly mm -hmm. out in the open. There are major players, the elite of the world, so to speak, whether it's government people, tech, uh, science, entertainment, all the big people gather for that. And they're literally pushing for global government with no mention of or, or no acknowledgement of human sin nature or God anywhere right. in it. So it's a completely humanistic mindset. But yes, I think, and, and in uh, Second Thessalonians chapter four, it talks about the restrainer holding back evil. So I believe, Jeff and I both believe that is the Holy Spirit indwelt church. Mm -hmm. So even now, as we're seeing globalism and all these other things pushing in on us and the draconian measures you mentioned, I think we will see more of that. I don't think it's going away. I think the church will hold it at bay somewhat. But after the rapture, you can see how immediately yeah. the world will be global. It is, it is amazing. I, I, when I sit and watch, whether it's uh, news or what, I don't watch much news, but when I, I sit and listen to some of the commentators and uh, even the people from Davos, and the book that came out, The Great Reset, then I hear that mm -hmm. repeated over and over and over again in different sound bites and different clips is that they're all saying the same thing, and they're from mm -hmm. 15 or 20 different countries. It, and it, they also have a, uh, a global leader, young leaders, 
training thing mm-hmm. where they literally intentionally train the next generation. Yeah. And, and I won't rattle off all the names, but a lot of the people you see in politics and the tech world right now were, were, went through that system. So it is prevalent around the world. So it's, again, that just lines up 100% with what sh- we should expect to see with end time Bible prophecy. Yeah. You think uh, with, with all these things happening, we're going to see more and more people setting dates? Uh, as, as, they, so. as, they, as it gets more prolific? Yeah, I think so because of two reasons. One, <clears throat> there's a, there, unfortunately, biblical illiteracy is huge right now. Not a lot of people have done full systematic you know, theology studies, so they don't realize that it, that's a bad thing. Uh, and also, the, the downside of YouTube and other platforms is Anybody with who can who is a you know good-looking young person who can talk well and and gain a following can be seen as a credible voice, and they may not know the ins and outs of Bible prophecy. So Jeff and I do spend quite a bit of time answering questions weekly about date setting and that kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's uh, it would be easy to do now with all the with everything yeah. that's going on. <clears throat> what do you see when uh, anything else besides the globalism, what, as far as this, this shadows being cast right now, that mm-hmm. really does lead into what we saw or what we see in, in, in Revelation and in, in, into, those, into those end times? Yeah, I think um, the, the technology we talked about, yeah. the push towards globalism, whether it's a one world currency, a one world government, or a one world religion, Mm-hmm. All of those are at play now um, in in different ways, and also the coarsening of culture in Second Timothy chapter three, the first several verses. If you read it, oh, it Timothy, yeah. I mean, Paul says to Timothy, "Mark this: there will be terrible times in the last days." Then he lists all these qualities mm-hmm. that are all. I mean, it's like watching the news when you read the list yeah. of qualities that he mentions there. So. Those are some other major components. Yeah, my wife mentioned that the other day. I, I, I got up after she did, and, and she looked at the, the headlines, and she says, oh, it's just the same thing. And she listed these things, and it sounded, mm-hmm. like, it sounded like Timothy. This is what Paul yeah. is saying to Timothy, that men are going to be lovers of themselves. And, and you look at the, the, the push towards transgender ideology right now, yeah. and it's, it, it just mm-hmm. boggles our minds. So, so when you look at all of this and you put it in context, and you're a new believer, where's your hope come from? Yeah, <clears throat> and that, that I think is one other positive aspect of the instability that we're seeing is, even though it is scary, and even though believers, new and old, daily have to say, remind themselves, God, you're sovereign, you're in control. Uh, I was not born at this time by accident. You have me here for a purpose. Even though we have to remind ourselves of that, it's healthy in the in the respect that we can finally start kind of unplugging from some of the things we maybe we used to put too much comfort and hope into the things of this world mm-hmm. where now we're having to daily plug into the Lord and say, God, you are my hope. You are, I'm trusting you like the first century believers, you know, the world's unstable. I think, especially here in America, we've been pretty spoiled the past 50 <laughs> we've or 60 had it pretty years. Easy. Yeah, we've had it pretty easy and, and we've done some great things. We've sent missionaries out whole nine yards but I think it's a time when God is, even even us mature believers who've been walking with him for some time, he's causing us to kind of plug in deeper and to really rely on him more. And again, just reminding people, we're he's sovereign. We're here at this time for a purpose, for a reason, and for this season. Well, I know we've got, we've piqued a lot of people's curiosity. How do people get uh, any of the resources that you and Jeff put out, uh, get to the podcast? Uh, how do yeah. they find Todd? Sure thing. Probably the simplest way you can get to anything related to me or Jeff and the podcast is just go to prophecyprospodcast.com. Mm-hmm. And there they'll be able to find the books and the, the guidelines and some of the resources there as well. Yeah, they'll see, there'll be links to all the past seasons of episodes. Mm-hmm. There'll be links to Jeff's ministry, my ministry, and some and our books and that sort of thing. So how often are you putting up a fresh podcast now? You're in your what, uh, seventh weekly. season? Yeah, we're in the seventh season, and we'll, each season is at least 12 episodes, and they release one a week. And then in between seasons, we may have a two- or three-week gap uh, as we're preparing and planning and praying. For more information on the Prophecy Pros, you can check out their website where they have a lot of resources. After the break. One way or another, we have to get our, this word into our kids because the challenges and the things that they're facing is great. 
Veronica and Aaron McLaurin lead a ministry in the Lima, Ohio area that's making an impact in the lives of young men and women. That's coming up next. Our culture is moving away from a biblically-based lifestyle faster than ever in history. Even many believers struggle to explain their own viewpoint on who Jesus really is. God says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. That's why TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Lacey, a program that discusses biblical issues and how they relate to our culture today. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, so no topics are off limits. But we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. Maybe you've never supported a Christian media ministry before, but in today's world, our message is needed more than ever, and it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. Would you like to help expand the reach of Viewpoint with Bob Lacey? Then sign in with your YouTube account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now would do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places that missionaries can't even reach. Thank you for helping us reach the world by sharing Viewpoint with Bob Lacey. Boxing can be a great way for youth to get their frustrations out. But for today's guest, it's also a way to share Christ. Veronica and Aaron McLaurin lead a ministry in the Lima, Ohio area that's making an impact in the lives of young men and women. These kids are learning some really uh, great talent. I mean, they're, they're learning some things because you know, I'm watching you and you're talking to them. You say duck, you say hit, you know, yeah. power, all this. And some of these kids are pretty good boxers. Absolutely. How do you send them back to school without their head getting so big that they think I can just take on anybody now and I'm going to go after that bully that was you know giving me a rough time last year uh, what kind of things do you send them back with as far as you've got this power you've got this ability but you you need control there's a lot of soft skills that we teach as well mm -hmm. there's focus self-control okay. time management um, flexibility, being flexible, task, the, task orientation, yeah, so there's a, a lot of that that happens as well. Mm -hmm. Besides just the physical and besides the, the, yes. the powerful stuff, you're teaching them the, the softer characteristics. It's something that's really needed. I mean, Absolutely. when you look at a, a, a school hallway these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's pretty yeah. good. But, but to answer your question, um, each kid is different. Mm -hmm. And so over that six week period, uh, God has blessed me. I fought for years myself. And so God has blessed me to be able to um, train others and identify very quickly some of the areas of struggle, uh, whether they lack in confidence, self-esteem, or the ability to stand up for what they believe in. And over that six week period, uh, as I'm running those hand drills, I'm trying to bring out some different in each person. One kid may not need a lot of that. This kid may need a little bit of structure of, this is how you need to kind of, you know, back off a little bit. You just got too much energy. You just mm -hmm. doing too much. You know, you just jumping too fast for, you know, to certain conclusion. Kid over here, you may be a little bit too shy. At the end of the day, each kid is different. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with something a little right. bit different. And so what we try to do is try to cater our conversations mm -hmm. to the basic needs to that kid. Um, 
two or three days, I got a pretty good grasp of what kid, each kid, and then with I done held some kind of a conversation with the mom, the dad. Why you want your kid in here? Or oh, they need to learn how to fight back. Well, what they need to learn how to fight back. Or they getting bullied in school? That may be one kid. Another kid, uh, he don't speak up for himself. That may be something else. It may be, uh, you know what? Uh, he just always shine down. Uh, and so we are, we try to get a really good mm -hmm. knowledge, a really good base. And then I ask God while I'm doing those hand drills, God, same way you meet our needs, or the same way you go right into that personal situation in our lives and meet us right where we at, how can we meet each kid? How yeah. can we build that kid confidence up? How can we build that kid? And we have, like I said earlier, each kid has di have a different fight. So this one kid may come in here, he may be acting out because he don't have a dad. Yeah. He don't have a mom. And he see you over there, Bob, you got a mom, you mm -hmm. got the dad, y'all high-fiving and y'all loving on one another. But when I leave out of the gym, I don't have any yeah. of that. And so how can we give you some of those small things, uh, We call which we call small successes, which means a big thing. And then sure. it's like, you know what? I, I feel like I've accomplished something. I feel like I got something. I don't have to go out there and prove that I'm tougher than somebody because that that thing that I was missing on the inside, I now I have fulfillment. I feel better. I feel so much better. And I know it's the Holy Spirit work. I'll share this one thing with you now that I'm thinking like this here. I remember we was doing a chicken dinner sale, <laughs> back on that chicken dinner sale. And uh, there was this homeless guy and uh, he was hungry. And I sent one of my younger guys over there to give him some dinners you know, a dinner because yeah. he was hungry. So he goes there, he give him a dinner, he comes back, he says, Coach, that guy had tears in his eyes uh -huh. and, and I didn't know what to do. And he started crying and I started crying. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. I yeah. said that to, to say, that can't, same kid, he was with me when he was 12 years old. I just talked to that kid two days ago. He's 24, 25 uh -huh. years old. And same heart, he got into a little bit of trouble, but he come right back to the gym. They always do. To mm -hmm. get that same type of feeding mm -hmm. that they got 10 yeah. years ago. I got one more story yeah. I need to share with you. Sure. I believe this is gonna hit home um, because you, you, you're starting to pull on the side that's <laughs> just kind of you know, intertwined. But let me give you this one more story. Uh, I um, received this phone call from um, this older couple. And they said, uh, you know, my son, my grandson used to come and train under you uh, six, seven, maybe 10 years ago. And I did boxing with him. And this kid has some discipline problem. He has anger issues. He had a lot. Long story short, he's, he's, he sent his grandma, granddad to the gym because they was dealing with Parkinson. Isn't that oh. something? But boxing is a good thing mm -hmm. for Parkinson. So long story short, the same thing that helped the young man out it's now the same thing getting to help the <laughs> grandma and granddad out. Awesome. You see how the kids sure. are. You know how you see how God has bridged that generation blessing over there. So I, th things like that really blesses us because that's what we want right. to see. Well, the thing I, I notice <laughs> is that you're, you're you're constantly edifying those kids as they're you're doing these hand drills. You're constantly building them up. Uh, you're talking to the parents and and, and telling them every child that comes out here today needs to be encouraged, Absolutely. needs to be lifted up, and you're encouraging the crowd to make, it's just not your kid you're cheering for, you're cheering for this whole community of, of children that come in here have problems that we have no idea what they're facing. So Don't have yeah. a clue. I yeah. mean, there's some That's kids right. that come in the gym, and a uh, young man we met, the first day he came in, his fists were balled tight, and he said, I just, I feel like hitting my teacher. Oh. And from that, we were able to open a conversation. This young man has excelled in the program, and he's doing so much better. I think they just find two individuals that they feel like they can talk to. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, God does it. We're just available, <laughs> and they come up to us, and we just say yes. Well, that young man that had his fist balled up <laughs> at the teacher, his testimony was a week later, we yeah. had a thought of the day, and the thought of the day was, Celebrate small successes. Yes. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, but celebrate small success. And he comes in the gym and he runs over to my wife. He said, I had a small success. <laughs> he did. And, and that's what came out of his mouth. I did not hit my teacher. Didn't hit my teacher. Oh, and, and, that and, is, that's, yeah. and that's huge right yeah. now because of um, school violence. And the school shooting. violence, school shootings, um, and the things. 
you know, war for, warfare is, um, it's high. Mm -hmm. And we think as Christians, we see warfare, and that's just us. But our kids see warfare. Real warfare, yeah. Yeah, inside the school, out of the school. And we have to get this word. Gotta get it to that's the, that's That's the only way things mm -hmm. gonna really change. Yeah. Now how we get to it, you know, this is our way of getting the word to mm -hmm. them. I know sure. Sunday morning, that's another way. But at the end of the day, one way or another, we have to get our, this word into our kids because the challenges mm -hmm. and the things that they're facing is great. What, what's the plans now? I mean, it, there, you, you've got a facility that uh, really, I mean, you're right downtown in the middle of this, this, this city mm -hmm. and surrounded by, you know, uh, old buildings that used to be falling down. Now it's kind of revitalized. It's, mm -hmm. it's starting to grow up again. What's your plans? Do you have, yeah. are you just waiting to say, God, what do we do next? Yeah, well, some of it is that it is just a daily walk with the Lord mm -hmm. and allowing him to lead us. But we do see that there is a restoration in the body of Christ through discipleship. And so we would love to be unchurched. We, we feel strongly called to those that have never walked into a mm -hmm. church before. Um, and we do have another floor that we have not quite um, redeveloped quite yet. But mm -hmm. that is where we'd love to do something with connecting the unchurched with God, mm -hmm. showing them, just walking alongside them, teaching Bible studies and sharing the good news of the Lord. We want to create a space for that. Would you, would you do that with a, a physical fitness connection of some kind or since it's already kind of a gym? Or? We yes. definitely would keep the physical fitness connection mm -hmm. because that's, you know, that's where that's, we glean most of them yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing. There, there's people out there right now saying, I, I, I'd like to get involved in this. I mean, <laughs> you, you've done this with, with God. I mean, God's done it through you. But at Absolutely. the same time, it's your faith and your prayers that have brought it all together and it's kind of making it happen. It could happen even, even faster. Absolutely. Uh, and you, you could reach a whole lot more kids. That's uh, the goal. If, that is the if, goal. Yeah. How can people get involved? Well, they can definitely um, donate, um, mm -hmm. pray. Um, we, we need all the prayers possible because you can feel it. You can feel right. when you're being covered. And that's very important. Um, but donations, we take donations. We actually have a fundraiser this weekend, uh, chicken, chicken dinner sale. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm getting one. <laughs> and Absolutely. so you could purchase a chicken dinner. We'll be at the AutoZone. Um, from time to time, we have open house events. Mm -hmm. We mark it on Facebook. Anything that you could donate, mm -hmm. if you have helping hands and you can come yeah. clean or build, we do all of that. How do, how do people find you on, on Facebook or on, how do they find you on social media? New Look Fitness. New Look Fitness. New Look Fitness, yep. and you'll find all of the Soldiers of Honor information there. Okay, yeah. so if somebody wants to register their children, they can do that same thing. Then. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank I know you. God's got a whole, whole lot more for you. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing <laughs> ministry, and when you just keep saying yes to God, it's, yeah. it gets exciting, doesn't it? It yes, does. Absolutely. It's very yes. exciting. As we do each week, I remind you that this show and the ministries of TV44 are supported by viewers just like you. So we'd appreciate your financial support. I'm Bob Placey, thanks for joining me. For more interviews on demand, plus additional resources from today's guests, go to WTLW.com and click on the Viewpoint tab. If you are enjoying Viewpoint, we would appreciate your financial gift so we can continue to produce more programs.